did it again. Forgot to go over the scriptures for you, because this is kind of cool. <clears throat> I think I did it in all the videos this morning. All of them had to have extra stuff put in, because I forgot to put them in. <laughs> and so, I, there's... by 17 and 21 interesting okay and so I uh, yeah there's third Nephi chapter 17 and chapter 21 they both quote from Micah did any of you ex-mormons know that the Book of Mormon took from the book of Micah did you who was like without the L. I'd have to check the Hebrew to make sure it's the right one, but uh, let's do the Micah one first. Maybe I should do this as a separate video. I think I will. We're doing a second video here, and I'll post them tomorrow. <laughs> so let's Sad fate of LDS or the sad condition uh, fate, and then uh, Book of Mormon, Micah prophecy. Because the Book of Mormon using it means it's a Latter-day Prophecy. So here we'll go over Micah first. Alright. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with a sword. So it's talking about uh, Babylon and the land of Nimrod. You mean Egypt? Let's get to, uh, oh, yeah, this is a Latter-day one. Messiah shall be born on 23rd September 2017. In other words, the latter days shall begin in 2017. Thou, but thou Bethlehem Ephrata, thou, though thou be little among the thousands of J Utah, yet out of thee, shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel among Mormons. For ye are the children of Israel and of the house of Israel. Mormons are. Ephraim. Which tribe are the majority of Mormons who are born and raised in the covenant from pioneer days? Ephraim and Bethlehem is the star Spica. That's the big sign. Matthew goes over it. Isaiah says it. John in Revelation tells us the precise day and hour. Revelation chapter 12. And so uh, the birth is at the house of bread. That's Spica. That's why she's holding sheaves of wheat or wheat strands, stalks, in her hand there. And so U Judah is phonetically the same as Utah. Matthew again repeats this. The Messiah will begin his ministry in Utah. That's the prophecy. None of these are literal history, guys. It's the learning of the Jews. It's revelation for the latter days. And we know it's in America. We know it's Joseph Smith's church that gets usurped by Brigham Young. We know this. It's already happened. 
You can't deny this. <laughs> Yet you do with Christian goggles. And so, let's get back to the passage. And so, remnant of Jacob, the usurper, shall be in the midst of many people as a mountain dew from the Lord. He even prophesies of mountain dew. the showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for man nor waiteth for the sons of men. <sighs> and this man, okay. He shall, okay, they're talking about a single man here. Yeah. Yeah. I was right. It is about me. I said in the other video, it's about me. I'm fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> yep, sure enough. And so, yeah, as a lion among beasts of the forest, and as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, all Mormons like sheep. Both treadeth down and teareth in pieces. See? If he knew me, he knew I was fulfilling prophecy. The truth is only hard to the guilty. If you're not guilty, you're going, oh yeah, that doesn't apply to me. Right? Those of you who watch regularly, you know I'm not talking to you, right? I know some of you were concerned in the beginning. I don't do this, Travis. No. <laughs> of course you don't. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> the well need no physician, only the sick. And so if you are not guilty, you don't take it personally. Because you know I'm not talking to you. You know I'm only talking to the guilty. And so the sad fate of Mormons is only the sad fate of Mormons who are guilty. If you're a Mormon watching for the first time and you're innocent, you'll go, oh, yeah. So Joseph Smith did condemn Jesus and Christianity. I knew it with my spiritual witness, but... I was concerned that it may be false. <laughs> but here you have cut off. This is the code word. You're supposed to catch this. Joseph Smith uses cut off in verse 40. Because this is about the latter days. And it's not cut off. <laughs> thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries. Satan's. That's the Hebrew word. Satan is adversary. And all thine enemies shall be cut off. Shall we look it up? We're doing a new video here. Micah 5, 9. Let's see how quick it's going to respond. There we go. Micah 5. Looking up Blue Letter Bible. Because I can access the Aramaic quick and easy and West Leningrad Codex and then we scroll down to 9 and and upon oh 
it's a different word. Interesting. Yeah, it's not adversaries. Yeah. Oops. Mistranslation. But yeah, they do say that it's adversaries. But no, it's not. <laughs> it's a different word that is traditionally used for this, so that's why they're doing it. But it is not. That's not what it actually is. That is interesting. In Aramaic, it is... Uh, Because that's the Zion, but it's like the Z for Zeta, which is the creation glyph, the god of creation, upon thine gods of Yah, the god Yah, actually, thine god of Yah. Huh. But uh, it would be the throne of God in Paleo-Hebrew upon thine th throne of God interesting but yeah there'd be more context involved correcting the translation here and you need to understand that this biblical Hebrew text was not created until 800 CE So you need to understand that the original document from which they're getting it from, which likely was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, I'd have to check to make sure that was one of them that was found to confirm the date. But the Dead Sea Scrolls does not have the points that the Masoretes put in. That's the difference. And so uh, I'd have to go into a full detail to describe that for you so but uh, yeah the hand shall be lifted up upon the throne of God by your throne of God huh. Huh. and all thine enemies shall be cut off yeah because the usurped church Interesting. Yeah, there, I'd have to spend more time on the context, going back to the lion and the forest and destroy thy chariots. But that's the next thing. We don't use horses and chariots anymore. We use cars. So they're talking about, and it shall come to pass in that day, say the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee and I will destroy thy chariots. Your mode of transportation. And so an EMP pulse will disable all vehicles, especially the electric cars that are emerging. But yeah, even the, the uh, combustion engine ones will also be disabled with an EMP pulse. Or destroyed could be an economic collapse where people can't afford gasoline anymore. Or civil war, which shuts down all the gas stations so nobody can get gas. And they run out, so the cars are useless. And I will cut off the cities of thy land and throw down all thy strongholds. I will cut off the witchcrafts out of thine hand. And I shall have no more soothsayers. That's exciting. I've had them comment on my channel. Astral theologists, get out of my channel. Graven images. Bye bye, statue Jesus. <laughs> Pluck up the groves out of the midst of thee. That's a statue Jesus type thing. Religious statue 
<clears throat> so I will destroy thy cities. And so, yeah, you're seeing that in the Book of Mormon. First in 3rd Nephi 17, and then they repeat it. 3rd Nephi 21. So it's kind of important, I would think, if they're repeating the scripture from the Bible of the latter days twice soon following in the Book of Mormon. And I don't think... passage it is 20 and 21 what, what's going on huh okay <laughs> I'm looking to see if Micah there it is in 16 C uh, where it treadeth down and teareth in pieces. So they do know the connection here. And so let's go to the beginning. It does not reference Micah here. It just says Jesus provides bread and wine miraculously. Oh, Bruce. And again, administers the sacrament unto them. That's the whole point of the latter days, Bruce. Osiris, murdered, body broken, blood spilt, thus the bread and wine for the sacrament. And Mormons in the covenant gather to partake of the bread and wine. And in so taking internally, they give birth to the Christ of the latter days, of whom Horus is a representation in Egypt, the son of Osiris, who returns to restore the throne for his father from the murderous usurper Set, King Set, Satan, the real adversary. The one who's on the God on the throne, who usurped it, and uh, and so yeah, and then Bruce R. McConkie makes an error. Jesus is the prophet like unto Moses. <laughs> Section one hundred three, verse sixteen, Bruce. Let's find that passage. Let's find that. Because the learning of the Jews, when you say, like unto Moses, a man like unto Moses, you're not talking about Jesus. Wrong interpretation. It is a human with human parents. And they're the ones who partake of the sacrament in remembrance of the Christ who is to come from among the Mormons. And he's already here now. So, interesting. Yeah, it's the man from Micah who doesn't get likened unto Moses. But he does talk about the gathering. Micah doesn't talk about the gathering, does he? Let's go back to Micah. No, he doesn't talk about the gathering. <gasps> Interesting. They added this to make Micah a prophecy of the man like Moses. And Bruce is purposely deceiving you. Whoops. Forward. Not letting me do it. And so, thy hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. And I will gather my people together, as a man gathereth his sheaves into the floor. 
It's the gathering. Moses, his keys. Man like Moses. Make my people. I'm not seeing Jesus here, Bruce. <laughs> and it shall be a new Jerusalem. Establish my people. There it is. <coughs> yeah. No, it's not Jesus, Bruce. Behold, I am he of whom Moses spake, saying, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. This is added into the Book of Mormon. We've done the Micah comparison here for the latter days. Micah is a part of the fulfillment of the latter days. And they put it in here. And in the context that he is section 103, verse 16. It is not Jesus. You do know how to read and comprehend what you read, right? I did the video to, specifically to Nelson going over this. This is not Jesus. Jesus is a fake. And I lose more Christians that way. And it shall come to pass that Mormons who will not hear that prophet shall be cut off. Uh huh. That's why I do my videos. And here they're adding from Acts. Verily, ver verily I say unto you, yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have testified of me. That's from Acts. Joseph Smith refers to Acts for the man like Moses. He says, that's our Christ. And he says in 103.16, he's Mormon, human, not Jesus. But then... 22 and 23. Interesting. 23 compares with Acts, and then 24 also compares with Acts, because he doesn't have us go to 24. He just says 22nd and 23rd verses. You have to keep reading in Acts to get the, all the prophets from Samuel apart. They're using Acts, which you need to tie to the Joseph Smith second vision. Fascinating. See how awesome the Book of Mormon is, guys? Behold, here are the children of the prophets. The bloodline, Joseph and Hiram. And here are of the house of Israel. Here are the covenant. Father, having raised me up unto you first, and sent me to bless you, and turning away every one of you, from your iniquities. And because you're the children of the covenant, because you are the children of the covenant. Wow. Okay. Well, you've been scattered and scourged. And so, yeah, I received the fullness of my God tale. Not message, because that's what it is, is evangelicon, or something like that, from the Greek. So, evangelize, give a message, angel, Malachi, messenger. And yeah, that's where Bruce gets it. Because he says, and they shall believe in me that I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And they shall pray unto the Father in my name. <laughs> and they do. <laughs> now, I wonder if the Book of Mormon says, or not, yeah, the 1830 version because uh, the condescending Jesus part does not have Son of God. It has God. And so Son of God being here makes me then think 
maybe the 1830 has something different in place of this as well. Did you know that? But I'd have to check it. And I don't have, I have the, um, let's check. Third Nephi 20, 20. And it may not be the same. This may take me too long to find. go over these and do some editings on them. But I think I did post a couple of stuff that I was given on Academia. 2031 <sighs> should not be going so slow this was a lot faster and now lately they're slowing it down that's not cool And we gotta wait for the pages to load. 92. There's more pages than that, aren't there? Really? Seriously? That's all you're gonna give me, huh? for it to add more pages. Chapters. Book of Yaqub. So we're way far away. Yeah, it seems like Sidney Rigdon was the one who was putting in Jesus.
Third Nephi 17. Here we go. Chapter 8. Okay. So that would be a good test to find out if this 1830 version does have the God rather than Son of God. It's not 17, is it? It's 20. Yeah. Okay. So it's 9, chapter 9, huh? Yeah, Jesus is still among the Americans, Americas, so that could explain why Jesus would be used here. The New Jerusalem. Prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto me like your brother. So yeah, Jesus is talking to them about the Jewish Christ who is not Jesus. Again, you have the first vision situation here where Mormons say it's Jesus who's talking to Joseph Smith about how Jesus is an abomination. All their creeds shall be cut off. That's why they use cut off, because it's not in Acts. It's destroyed in Acts. Because I tried, I looked at the uh, 1769 King James Version, and it says destroyed. It does not say cut off. <clears throat> so I tried to confirm with the, the their version, just in case our King James Version is different. And no, it's not cut off, which is interesting. No, it does have Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So now I'd have to check the condescending Jesus to confirm if this 1830 version that the church has online is actually a betrayer, an imposter. I probably should, since I'm here. So, yeah, that's the message of Micah. Uh, let's... Condescension of God. The virgin whom thou seest is the mother of Son of God. First Nephi eleven eighteen. Okay. This will be a good quick test to find out. First Nephi chapter fifth. First Nephi fifteen. So we need to go up still. tell you it's Emmanuel when they use sun at noonday. <clears throat> Is this 19? No, this had to be... Okay, so I passed it. So 
So they combine 10 to 14 for this chapter. It's gone away. Okay. Because they'll believe it's in the Son of the Most High God. City of Nazareth. Virgin, most beautiful and fair among all the virgins. He saith unto me, No, it's not the condescension of God. No, 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 no. Mother of God. Okay. Yeah. So they do use Son of God later on. And that's why they justified putting Son of God in this position here. But uh, both are gods. The Father and the Son. So it's a ridiculous argument, but it does confirm that this is in the actual 1830 account or edition. So, yeah, fascinating. Okay. And then so... He repeats it in 21. Otherwise they shall be cut off and destroyed. Israel shall build a new Jerusalem. Thy seed shall begin to know these things. Work. Can't remember. Oh. Leave in my words who am Jesus Christ. Because they use that because he's speaking here. That's why they use Jesus. It shall be done even as Moses said. They shall be cut off from among my people who are of my covenant. Mormons are going to be cut off. They clarify that in chapter 21 of 3rd Nephi. Bring forth unto the Gentiles and shall give unto them power that he shall bring them forth unto the Gentiles. It shall be done even as Moses said, they shall be cut off from among my people who are of the covenant. Mormons. They're the Gentiles. People who are a remnant shall be among the Gentiles. <laughs> and lifted up in upon their adversaries. Cut off the horses and the chariots. Now this is this is the full copy. This doesn't have the Acts passage and the the uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, Christ. This is the full Micah version here. Come unto my beloved son, them will I cut off. And yeah, last day, verse 20, for it shall come to pass, saith the Father, that at that day whomsoever will not repent, Mormons, and come unto my beloved son, them will I cut off from among the Mormons, O house of Israel. And I will execute vengeance and fury upon the Mormons, even as upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. The Book of Mormon gets into that, and it's called porn. <laughs> Snuff porn. But if they will repent and hearken unto my words, and harden not their hearts, are anybody listening? <laughs> Here's the faith promotion. <laughs> now, I will establish my church among the Mormons, and they shall come in unto the covenant and be numbered among this the remnant of Jacob, unto whom I have given this land for their inheritance. America be called a new Jerusalem. Build a city, not a kingdom. No old 
overthrowing of the government here. Yep. Be gathered in. Key of Moses. Gathered home to the land of their inheritance. Fascinating. So yeah, they they threw in some Isaiah here, it looks like. Established by church, though, is not from the Old Testament. That was put in. So yeah, they're they're adding extra commentary to explain Micah. Fascinating. Huh. Yeah. Book of Mormon Micah prophecy of LDS. Okay. Sad fate of LDS, and then Book of Mormon Micah prophecy of LDS. Ta-da! For tomorrow. I didn't do a Book of Mormon lesson video, 21. Didn't do that today. We'll see if I get to it tomorrow. <laughs> it would be another Mormon, or more Isaiah, right? Just have 21 and 22 left. Yep, Isaiah 49. And then 22 is a summation <gasps> about the latter days. See? They specifically chose those specific Isaiah ones. And then, then commentary for 22 on what he just talked about from Isaiah. He re says he rids them on the place of brass. <laughs> what do you mean that you just, what you just read? Are they spiritual or are they going to happen in the flesh? Oh, Mormons.